Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. I am super excited for this episode today. Back in episode 307, I interviewed Jamie Carocho, and she's back again today, as promised, because we went so deep into the homepage um, of the website that we ran out of time to talk about other pages. So we decided we would do a little series on pages of your website and writing persuasive copy for them and how you can make them be more effective in terms of lead generation and conversion. So today we are going to talk all about your home or your, sorry, about and services pages. So without further ado, Jamie, welcome back to the Robin Graham show. Thank you so much, Robin. Thanks for having me back. Of course. It's always such a pleasure to see you. You know that I just think you're so so delightful. It's so wonderful. So our conversations are always fabulous and I appreciate you immensely. Thank you. And I feel exactly the same. So it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> So um, listeners, I want to encourage you to go back and listen to episode 307, but in case you don't have time to do that, before you listen to this episode today, I'm going to have Jamie just give a little overview of what she does and who she is so that you have a little background and then we will dive straight into our conversation. Yes. Well, hello. I'm Jamie Curcio. I am a copywriter. I've been doing this copywriting thing for almost a decade now, which is kind of crazy to think about. Uh, and I really specialize in helping coaches and business owners um, write copy that um, write persuasively online in a way that feels really aligned with their personality and their values. And um, yeah, I've been doing that in this space for, for a while now. And one of my favorite things to do is, is have conversations like this and do trainings on how to write persuasively online, because there's a, a lot of information you can find out there. But I found that it's really about finding a balance of techniques and templates and structures that are proven to work, but also making them our own and finding ways that we can feel really good about the messages that we're putting out there online um, and doing it even, if possible, even in a fun way. So that's what I hope for us to be able to dive into today. I love it. So let's dive straight in, Jamie, and talk about, let's start with the about page. I mean, last time we went so deep into the home page, but your about page is really where people can get to know more about you and your story. So how should we approach our about pages? Great question. So this is one of the kind of few times you'll hear me recommend shining the spotlight on you for our listeners, you as the business owner, because um, oftentimes in copy, the best, most effective copy is when we really shine the spotlight on our reader, right? Make it all about them. The about page is an opportunity where you get to share your story why you do what you do, who you do it for, you know, who you help and how you help them. But there's also an opportunity to kind of reiterate who this is really for. So even though it's the about section and it's about you, I often recommend starting that page by bringing the reader in and then sharing with them about who you are. So one, there's a few different kind of go-to or must-have structures or um, parts of this, if you will, that I like to include. Always, and this is something that often is missed on about pages, you still want to have a really great attention grabbing headline. Um, so oftentimes you go on somebody's about and it's OK. Sometimes, you know, we'll have it. It'll just say about and then it'll go into the story. If possible, if we want to upgrade it, take it kind of one layer deeper and have an opportunity because any headline, the top of any of our website pages is prime real estate to grab attention. So what I'm going to recommend and I'll share, I have this four step story framework. And I know we've talked about storytelling on this podcast before, too, specifically for the origin story, looking at four, four steps, right? Or when I say origin story, it's your about story, right? Like where, you know, why did you get into this? Why do you do what you do? And before we get into that, I'll share just kind of high level what those are super simple, but really powerful for helping you focus the story that you share. And there are kind of two parts that I recommend on the about. There's the more storytelling based part that is you know, sharing um, your background, how you got here. And then there's also a bit more of a third person professional bio. So if we start with the four step story framework that I learned years ago, and I've been teaching clients for years now too, is there's four parts. The first one is starting with challenges that you face. So here, there's a, a little bit of a caveat here. Most of us listening may have at some point in time been our ideal client, where they are now. That's not the case for everybody. If that is the case for you, then sharing an origin story can be a really powerful way of showing them that you understand 
what they're going through and have been through similar challenges and how you overcame them and came to help others do the same. If that's not your case, if you're listening and thinking, that's not me, I'm not my ideal client, I never was, but was, were them, that's okay too. You can always share um, a story about a client or how you got involved in that space if it's not a transformation that you went through personally. Because that's, I see people get stuck there a lot. So those are your kind of two options. And then once you choose that from there, I would share about the challenges that you face right along the way. Then you're going to transition. That's step one. Step two is catalyst for change. So what was kind of the defining moment that changed everything for you that got you involved in this space? And then the really important part is talking about the transformation. So what specific results did you get? Another common mistake I see in copy is clients or not clients, anyone, you know, small business owners sharing the challenges, but then forgetting to talk about how they overcame those challenges. And that is key to really concreting our credibility and authority so that they know that you overcame those challenges and can now help them do the same. And then I always like to, when we talk about the transformation, the third step, right? What did it look like? What results did you get? And then the fourth step is why the why why is the story relevant or important to your reader right and that's usually where we tie it in with who you help and how you help them and why you do that and then that's kind of like that can be a few paragraphs it doesn't have to be a crazy amount of copy but that's what i always like to to see and it's a great way for people to better understand who you are what you're about why you're doing this and then you can do a couple other things on the page. I do like to have a, a section, if this isn't weaved in throughout, about why you're different from other you know, coaches or business owners out there, whatever an industry you may be in, about your specific experience and credibility. You might share about your process or your specific values. And then the professional bio that I refer to usually is right on this page, right after the origin story, which I do recommend sharing in first person and having that be kind of a personal account. After that, you can share a professional bio that's written in the third person. And this is just a paragraph. I really like to include this for a few reasons. One is if you are ever going to be interviewed on a podcast or invited to speak somewhere, often they will reach out to you. The team will reach out to you and ask for um, media information or your bio. And oftentimes the first place they'll check is your website to see if you have something there. So having something that's a paragraph that they can literally copy and paste is, is great. It just makes everyone's life easier. And it also goes, it, it is a nice contrast between having the storytelling of your origin story and then kind of like the solid professional third person bio to just like back it up with a really concise version of, you know, who you are, what you're about and what your experience looks like. And then something else that's really important and often overlooked on the about page is making sure you include a call to action, right? So a button that they can click. Typically, if it, I will recommend that this be to work with you, maybe it's to check out your services if you have several or, you know, to book a consult right off the bat, right? So if you've shared who you are, who you're for, how you help them. The natural next process step of the process is if this sounds like some, you know, if if um, this resonates with you, then click a but the button, you know, book a book a consult and let's talk. Let's have a conversation. That's kind of high. I love it. I love it. And I want to emphasize, like for SEO, if you have a, a title or whatever you call yourself, like brand marketing strategist. Uh, Christian business coach or persuasive copywriter, whatever those titles are that you use that you want people to find you for, be sure that you incorporate that. That's a great key phrase for this particular page, because as people are searching for that, you'll come up and people can immediately learn your origin story, how you help your people, why you help your people and who your people actually are. So they know right away whether or not you're going to resonate or they're going to resonate with you and the two of you would be a good fit to work together because we always have to remember SEO. Um, and I love Jamie, the call to action. I just did a, an episode on, um, lead magnets today. It'll air tomorrow actually, but well, by the time everyone's hearing this, you will have already probably listened to that episode, but I was going to say your call to action could be that lead magnet. If you didn't want it to be book a call, depending on where you're at in your business, if you're ready for people to book calls right away with you, or if you want to warm them up a little bit more then you could use that, or you could even have that. We try to limit the call to actions to one per page, but 
if you wanted to really capture emails, if you're in that phase of your business, then you could actually have that at the top and then the call to action to work with you down below. But anyway, you can choose one or two, but I would definitely not go over that. It just depends on where you're at and how much you want to grow your email list. Absolutely. One or two tops and just making sure you have at least one, right? Not having yes, none. Yes. We want to make sure that we're always like guiding them along on their journey through visiting the webpage and, and pushing them along um, and motivating them to take an action. And you're absolutely right. Depending on what your goal is with your website, you may have the book a call, you may have the lead magnet, you may have both. Um, and then you can kind of capture people wherever they're at in their journey. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing is too, Amy Wendy. Um, and we're going to dive into that. But this would be a good place to, to hyperlink to the service page within the copy. So if people, when you're talking about transformation or when you're talking about results, you can direct them to your service page. And that way you have that hyperlink for SEO. It's a good um, strategy, but also just to keep people on your site longer and then provide those hyperlinks within the copy to give them more information. Or if you've written a blog post specifically about that transformation or a case study, that would be a good place to hyperlink that information as well. Absolutely. Great tips. Good. Good deal. Okay. Let's dive into the service page. Yes. Okay. This one's juicy. So <laughs> I'm pulling up some notes because I have my go-to structure for this one as well. But first sharing Top, kind of high level top, you know, top of the page. What is the goal with this page, right? The services page is essentially the way I like to think about it is it provides prospects, potential clients with the information they need to make an informed decision about whether or not to purchase your services, your programs, whatever it is you might be selling. And something I learned a long time ago in sales and marketing is that it's not necessarily about, it's not about forcing anyone to buy our service or products, right? But rather educating and sharing and showing that for the right person where there's a fit, then this is a viable solution, right? And so in our copy, we can really filter for those perfect fits because we're not gonna be for everyone and that is okay, but we wanna make sure that the people we actually can help know that we can help them and we write in a way that compels them to sign up. So that's kind of having our goal in mind. Also, I always have to mention, I didn't mention this with the about, but I would say for any page on your website, and we talked about this on our last episode, the last episode on websites around the homepage is as a prerequisite before you even write or update any of this copy, just really making sure that you have your messaging dialed in. When I say men messaging, I'm always talking about three core things, your positioning, who your ideal client is and what your offer is. Because if you have those things dialed in and you understand clearly, then writing the sales page or the services page, if you will, becomes loads easier and the likelihood of it resonating with the right people is just gonna skyrocket. So when it comes to what do we actually include on the services page, the work with me page, there's a couple different ways you can do it. Would you say Robin, that most of the audience, there might be a mix, are selling kind of a high-end or a service or a program or digital products, physical products? Yeah, I would say we definitely have people listening who have physical products, but the majority of people are in the service-based industry. Either they're selling consulting services, coaching, um, you know, one-to-one -one or group slash online courses. Great. Okay. I'm going to share tips for, for both parties, but the, the longer kind of more elaborate thing we'll go into today is for the service-based peeps. So mm -hmm. this is for any, um, and also you'll see that when it comes to sales pages, sometimes they can be combined a sales page can be a standalone thing asset, right? Your service page, I would argue, should also be looked at as a sales page, whether you are selling a direct to purchase, right? So someone clicks on a button and they can pay and actually sign up or what you're selling is actually a free phone call for them to get on the phone where you then have a sales conversation and enroll them into your program or service. Either way, I like to look at it as a strategic asset that is, you know, we wanna sell something, even if it's a free call. And so with this, also we'll see, depending on the price point of what you're selling, um, some things will naturally require a phone call. From what I have seen, and this isn't a hard and fast rule, but typically if you're selling anything over a few thousand, you'll probably likely need some sort of phone call to get people in. I have seen people sell uh, higher end 
services direct through, you know, purchase and, and people sign up. Um, but more likely than not, you'll, it'll be probably most effective to get them on a call and they'll have questions and then you can enroll them through a conversation. That being said, your services page can still do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. And it absolutely should be a place where we can kind of pre-qualify people. So in terms of what the structure looks like, would you like me to dive into a little bit about what I would recommend? Yes. to yeah? yeah, cool. Yes, I would love it. I'm just listening to you because I just... I know you're on the right track and I figured you were coming to this point. So yes, absolutely. Cool. Awesome. So very first thing, and this is the same as all, all the pages we've talked about up till now, homepage, even about page, having a hook headline. For your services page, I do highly recommend focusing it on a top pain or desire. It is proven that we are, as humans, we are more likely to try to avoid pain than to seek pleasure, which is fascinating and gives us insight into how leading with the pain in our hook headline can be a more effective approach. That being said, you can absolutely play around with focusing on a desire. So what that might look like is, you know, are you, and then I would pop in the title of your ideal client. So let's say your ideal client is, um, I don't know, women starting a business. So are you a, a woman starting a business who is struggling with X, Y, Z, right? Here we know that what we talk about a lot on, on this podcast and Robin, you're all about, um, you know, marketing online without, you know, having to rely on social media, right? So that's a big pain for a lot of people. And so that could be an example too, right? Tired of trying to market yourself and, you know, having to rely on all these social media uh, platforms. And we can get more specific and, and more strategic, but as a general frame of mind, that's kind of where we can start. And then I do always recommend having a subheadline on this page as well. So we have our primary big hook headline and then a subhead where we just state who you help and how you help them. And this is literally, if we look at this as a kind of simple framework to follow, it is your ideal client plus their top desired outcome. And then once we do that, we can start the body copy of the page, if you will, by speaking to their top pains. So hopefully if you have spent some time dialing in your core message that we've mentioned, you'll already know what your ideal client top pains are and their top desires. So this is where you would plug those in. You know, are you struggling with X, Y, Z? Three to five quick specific examples of what they might be struggling with so that they can see themselves reflected in your copy, feel like you see them, there, you understand them. And then that gains a little bit of trust. So then when we introduce you know, your solution, they're going to be like, okay, this is for me because you've already kind of pre-qualified them. So after the pains, we go into, I like to share things that they've tried before that hasn't worked for them. So if you help someone, say you help women going through um, financial troubles, or just maybe you just want, they just want to grow their wealth, right? So maybe something they tried before was working uh, with other accountants or financial advisors who just didn't really listen or didn't seem to have their best interest at heart, right? Or maybe they tried some online courses or some free webinars. Whatever you know that they've tried that didn't get them the result they were looking for, just state that in a couple lines. And again, each section that I'm outlining here doesn't need to be paragraphs and paragraphs of copy. It can be a few bullets where we just touch on the most important things. And then after we share what they've tried before that hasn't worked for them, I like to start spreading or weaving in some client results. This can be written testimonials, um, video testimonials. It can be a couple quotes, anything, just a few quick ones there. One of the things I'm going to recommend is that we have, depending on the amount of social proof that you have, which again can be testimonials, results, any, any of these things, depending on the amount you have, I would recommend sprinkling them throughout the page and I'll highlight different key areas. If you don't have a lot, that is okay. You can include them more towards the bottom of the page to kind of reinforce and back up the copy that the more emotionally driven copy that you've shared up until now. But this would be a great place to plug a few examples. If you have a more in-depth case study and a case study is as simple as challenges that this person came to you with, how you help them, which is essentially your program or service, and then specific results that they got, you might take a bit of the page, the services page to just go deeper into more than just a testimonial, right? You might say, you know, another quick hook headline, how this client went from X challenge to Y result. And then you kind of do a little bit of storytelling, maybe a couple paragraphs. And then after that, you introduce your signature process or program or offer, depending on how you have that set up. Basically, the way that you help clients get these types of results. After that, then I recommend including your bio, which this can be 
copy and paste it. And maybe Robin, you can speak a little more to SEO with, if this should be any different, but also plugging in your quick paragraph, your professional bio that we talked about, something similar, if not the same thing from your about page, just making sure that you have a quick intro because we can never assume that someone has read all the other pages of our website, right? So we always wanna make sure we've got a really strong professional bio um, that we can just plug into a place like this. And on a sales page or services page, this is the part in the process where, okay, you've kind of hit, connected with them emotionally, showed them some social proof, some to speak to the logical side of the brain, wondering, you know, if there's numbers or stats or data behind this. And then you introduce your signature program or service, back it up with your bio. Who are you, right? Why, why should they care about who's saying this? Who are you? How is this relevant? And then you can share more client results, more social proof. Then I like to kind of just outline, again, it can be a bulleted list or kind of depending on how you visualize or design your website, just some boxes of specific benefits or outcomes that people can expect or potentially get through your signature process or program. And then I like to wrap it up with a simple apply now. If you are getting people on the phone, I like to have a simple yet effective um, application where they can sign up for a call. If you don't have an application, I do recommend having one. Maybe we can talk about that another time. We're in a little bit here of what I would actually include to continue pre-qualifying. So you're not wasting time on the phone with the wrong, uh, with unqualified people and they're not wasting time either. And that's pretty much it. Oh, you make it sound so simple. <laughs> it's so it's a would... simple structure. Then when it comes <laughs> back to building it out, you do it does require some. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is that um, you know, where the and this is where like really fine-tuning your messaging is key because it makes it so much simpler. But the most important thing that makes this so much easier is knowing who your soulmate client is. And you mentioned, and we talked about this related to the homepage too, is having those specific pain points and then what the benefits are and, and really offering that comparison of you're here now, but you want to be here and let them know that you see them, you hear them, you understand them. You've been in their shoes, like really build that emotional co connection that you get them. And there's just no question about that. And I think that's one of the most key things that you can do. Absolutely. And even using those exact words in your copy, I always love coming back to, you know, you, you hit some pains and you say, if this sounds like you, you're not alone. Exactly. Like you said, or I've been there too, or you're in good company. Like even it sounds so simple. And I think it's easy to take it for granted that we think, you know, oh, they know this, but you'd be surprised. I mean, think anyone listening, think about any services you've needed to hire, whether it was a lawyer, a financial advisor, uh, a business coach, um, any, any service you can imagine where you went on their website and did the copy speak to you? Did they actually, if they were doing a good job, maybe, and maybe that led you to hire them, or maybe you had to depend on a referral from someone you knew who already liked and trusted them. But most of the time, if we pull up the, the majority of websites out there of service-based providers, they are missing a huge opportunity to connect more deeply with their readers, with their visitors, and potentially convert them into clients. And a very simple yet impactful way to do that is by leading with these pains, like we mentioned, and letting them know they're not alone and that a better or faster or easier, you know, X way exists, if that's the mm -hmm. case, if that's what you're presenting. And it can go a really long way. And I think the reason I like to break it down into very tactical structure, even though, yeah, it sounds simple when we say it here, right? And then it's like, okay, how do we actually go about building this? But I found that the biggest kind of hold up for coaches and, and business owners is figuring out like, what am I actually supposed to include on this page, right? You might start with one thing and then get distracted. So I like to use these structures as a, as an outline, as something, mm -hmm. as a starting point. And if you get to a point where you're like, oh, I don't have that much social proof yet. Okay. Include what you have and then keep going. But this is a kind of proven structure that I've seen work very well, um, just in general across industries and, and the different clients I've worked with, where it just kind of has all the components we need from an emotional perspective and a, and a logical kind of like stats and data perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to encourage listeners too, if you don't have a lot of social proof or a lot of testimonials yet, think back to who you have been helping before you started your business or as you've been laying the groundwork for your business, 
who are the people you've been having conversations with that have said to you, can I pick your brain? And you have laid out a plan for them. You've given them information and they experienced a transformation because chances are you have done this hundreds of times without even realizing it because it wasn't part of your business. But go to those people and just say, hey, you know, do you remember that conversation we had? Do you remember how I gave you that information? What was the impact of that? Could you write a testimony for me for since I did that for you? And people are ready to help you, especially if they know you're starting a business and you need this for your website. And if they want to remain confidential, you can just use their initials on your website with the testimonial. Um, it's great to have photos there because that gives you an opportunity to really showcase who you've helped. But if you don't have their photos and they want to remain um, behind the scenes and confidential, then just use their initials. But And you can promise them, hey, if you'll do this for me, I'll, I'll keep it confidential and just use your first initial, your last initial, or both initials, whatever they prefer. Another idea to get social proof too is if in that situation where you've helped someone in the past or if you've helped clients is I have a list of questions that I will ask my clients midway through when we're working together. And I get great voice of customer that way of where they started and where they see themselves now. What transformations did they occur? What are my superpowers? And really getting to know the ins and outs of what they think of me as a business coach, but also what the experience was working with me. So those are great ways to hone in on social proof too, if you haven't already built a repertoire of uh, testimonials. Jamie, I have a question because we talked about social proof and I know on the homepage, we talked about social proof. Do we need social proof on the about page? Great question. And I'm, I'm really glad you brought up about the ways to get social proof. I have some more to add to that. Maybe that we can circle back to in just a moment. Because, yes, let's do. But it, I get really excited about this because it's a huge missed opportunity. And it's a lot easier than we think. But on the about page, that's an excellent question. It if you follow a similar structure to the one we're talking about today, it will naturally flow in. So where does that happen, right? When you talk about your background, the challenges, the transformation, and then you connect it to the today, right? How you ended up creating your business, working with the clients you work today, there is always an excellent opportunity to weave in some benefits and some so social proof. It doesn't have to be, I wouldn't necessarily recommend, you don't have to include like structured testimonials, although you could include them, you know, throughout, I'm not going to, if you have tons, like weave them in for sure, but you don't have to, but the way that you can include social proof on the about page is by even just a couple of sentences, speaking about the types of clients you've helped and how you've helped them. And it can be a sentence or two that just highlights the type of transformation. Or when, when I talk about that core message, oftentimes one of the, my favorite things to do is come up with a one-liner about who you help and how you help them. And if you do nothing more than include that one liner of who you help and how you help them, that how you help them part is the benefit, the outcome, the desired result, whatever you want to call it, that you can plug strategically throughout your website and the about would be an excellent place. And that can be in your origin story and or it can also be in that professional bio write-up. I, I absolutely recommend that it definitely be in the professional bio write-up um, because especially if someone might be using that to introduce you or to talk about you to their audience, that is a great place to just drop it for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So let's circle back to the testimonies. Yes. So I, I was listening to you and just like nodding along the whole time, because this is, I can't tell you how many coaches, I, I typically work mostly with coaches who are in the service-based industry, right? And I can't tell you how many of them have come to me and said, you know, I'm just really lacking social proof. I just started my business or, um, you know, I've been doing it for a bit, but I don't have a lot of written or I don't have any video testimonials. My people don't like to go on video or it's very confidential. They don't even want to share their name. They don't want me to share anything. And what I found, you shared a good few pointers for sure about um, initials or even if you have to in some industries like healthcare, for example, I've worked with folks, you can't even use like initials, they would have to mm -hmm. use like a pseudonym. If you have to use a pseudonym, you know, a fake name, that's fine, as long as what you're sharing is authentic and, and real. And then um, off, you mentioned going back to people that you helped, whether it was friends or colleagues, and asking them about the impact that had. And that is a beautiful strategy. Also, if before you created your business, maybe you worked in corporate or in a different setting, a professional setting where you were using a lot of the skills or talents that you have in a team format, or even as an employee, you can still leverage those results that you got in that environment to speak to the type of 
you know, uh, skills or experience that you have today. And I think that's a huge missed opportunity. I can't tell you how many people come to me and they've been in corporate for maybe up to 20, 25 years before they switched and opened up their own business and did their own consulting or coaching. And it's like, they open up their coaching or consulting business and they think they're starting from scratch. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You have literally held C-suite positions in, in corporations or in organizations. And even if you didn't hold a C-suite position, but you were in some sort of leadership role, whether it was given to you and clearly stated, or even in your role, you just you know, helped people in some way, you can speak to that and say, you know, when I, before, you know, in this in arena, I held, or years ago, I helped um, in a team setting, I helped accomplish this or that, or I helped the team, you know, increase productivity, or we implemented these different strategies. And this was the result. We don't have to get caught up on saying that it was a client or saying that I was an employee at this organization. We don't have to mention those details. What's relevant and important that we can still leverage is the impact that was made like you were talking about so that is for anyone who th is thinking you know i don't really have social proof i highly encourage you to sit down and just write what were some major wins or results that you helped get in any of the phases of your career even if it was before the business you have today or in your personal life and i think you'll be surprised to find that you have more than you think mm -hmm. yeah i agree 100 percent. and those are great um personality references as well because even if it's not specific to a, a tangible transformation, sometimes if we just get the, the personality mm. testimonials, because people need to know that we're trustworthy, that we're emotionally invested, you know, things like that also. So um, those aren't bad things to have either, just to shine your personality. I think, you know, if you're empathetic, you're kind, you're caring, you're trustworthy, those are huge. You know, you you adhere to your values, you know, all those things I think are really important too. So keep that in mind um, if you are lacking testimonies, because there's, there's so many ways you could garner them. You could even offer to do a free consult or something to someone and say, hey, you know, will you, I'll do this for free if you'll like, give me a testimony. Absolutely. Um, I know people who have done that as well. So, okay. So with all of that said, Jamie, I want to go back just real quick to the bio that you were talking about. And when you were talking about like PR opportunities, things like that, we've had so many episodes on podcast guesting, and I'm going to link a couple of those in the show notes. So you can go back, but if you create a media page, Having your bio on that media page is a great place if you do intend to be a podcast guest or if you want to get speaking engagements, things like that. I encourage you to have that page on your website. It doesn't have to have a lot of information, just enough to you know register for Google, like 300 to 600 words, and then your photo and um, a link to your media kit and your bio right there front and center. And then you can also have features on that page. Uh, I know we talked about the homepage having feature specific features too, like if you're in a big magazine or bent awards, things like that, but the media page um, can also serve that purpose. So I wanted to just encourage you that um, that's another option. Definitely have it on the about page, but you have the opportunity to create that um, media page as well. And then when you do that, you have the opportunity for backlinks to anyone that was so kind to feature you as well. Um, Jamie, anything more that you want to provide about the service or about pages? Speaking to the last thing you were just mentioning about the, the bio, and maybe this is something we can link for free in the, in the show notes, but I have a professional bio template that I love to use that I would love to share with the audience in case anyone's thinking, <laughs> you know, how do I talk about myself? How do I talk myself up or really highlight my credibility or, um, these top results if I feel like, it just feels icky to talk about myself in that way, which is a common, I don't know if it's one that you hear often, but it's definitely one that mm -hmm. I hear all the time about people not wanting to feel braggy. And it is literally just a template that is a paragraph long where you can pop, pop in your specifics. And then I also include some client examples of different ones that I've written or clients I've worked with. And then that way you can see them in action. You can see a few different variations. So you can pick one that works for you. Because I think oftentimes the biggest holdup in 
copy, creating any copy assets is figuring out where to start and how to write in a way that doesn't feel kind of sleazy and having a, this is why I love structures, templates, frameworks, because it gives mm -hmm. us a starting point. And so that was one thing I wanted to share that if anyone is thinking, okay, great, I need this professional bio, but what does that look like? I do have this free resource that we can, we can share with you as well. Okay. That's perfect. That's super great. And you guys, this, what Jamie just referenced, and I'm going to link back to that episode on lead magnets too, because that's a great way to get email addresses. So I'm going to link back to the episode on lead magnets because one of the uh, formats I talked about is templates, list, things like that. So that's a great, I'm glad you looped that in Jamie, because it's perfect to, for me to be able to link back to that episode. So, all right. So Anything else before we close out? Uh, let's see. Just some common last last few tips is making sure that we have kind of follow our copy basics that we talked about last time, right? Having clear headlines, calls to action, um, SEO, like we talked about, right? Making sure that that part is taken care of, prioritizing benefits over features. And just, I think the biggest piece of advice just to close out here that I could give to anyone is making sure that you're just being yourself in your copy and the hard, the heavy lifting of like what to include or what, how do we actually write persuasively or in an effective way that can help with conversions and all of that. There are structures, templates, these frameworks that we're talking about that can help you cover that part. And then it is a matter of, I always say, find freedom within the structure. So use the structure because it's proven, right? So that you don't feel like you're starting from scratch and you don't know where to start. Use it, but then find your freedom within it and just make sure that you're being yourself. If you, a lot of the clients that I work with who like a lot of the, the listeners, I imagine, might, may not consider yourselves writers. You might, and that's fantastic, but most of you probably don't, or you might even be really great at speaking or coaching, but when it comes time to write down ideas, maybe that's you shine more in the verbal or audio form. And if that's the case, I highly recommend that if you're sitting down to write your copy, maybe you even pull up a an app like otter.ai, which is basically to record and it automatically transcribes, or you just record yourself and then write out the copy if you find that that's more natural for you. But the biggest thing is just making sure that you're showing up, being yourself and not being afraid to, to be honest and transparent and authentic in your copy because that will go way farther than just having kind of like checking off all the tabs of what you should have for persuasive copy. Mm, I agree 100%. And this all comes full circle to your personal brand and differentiating yourself as the, the authority, the expert, the person that truly understands their pain points, but you're being authentic and presenting yourself as someone that is unique and you're sharing your journey, which is authentic. So they understand that you really truly get them. Exactly. Love it. All right. Listeners, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope you enjoyed this second in the series. And who knows, maybe we'll have more. I mean, there are certainly more pages you could put on your website, but there's also a ton of information that we could share on copywriting and copywriting with SEO and all those things. So I'm sure Jamie will make an appearance again <laughs> in the not so distant future. But in the meantime, Jamie, will you tell the listeners where they can connect with you, learn more from you? Absolutely. Best place, the most active place where I'm at is on LinkedIn if you're on there. If not, you can check out my website. It's my name, which we'll have to type out because <laughs> it's not that easy to spell. But I'll also be sharing um, the that that uh, freebie of the free gift of the professional bio template. Um, so yeah, follow along on LinkedIn if you're there or just send me a message, even if it's just to connect or ask me any questions. I, I'm in your corner and I'd love to, to support. Thanks, Jamie. Listeners, Thank if, yeah, absolutely. Listeners, if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a rating and review. That is how I continue to be able to get great guests like Jamie and provide so much value to you as you grow your business, especially without social media. And I am truly grateful that you stayed till the end and I will see you all next time.